The word of the Lord reads, John chapter 11, verses 32 through 45. Put it up there for you. The King James text today reads, Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou had been if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled, and said, Where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone, lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he sticketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldst believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth! And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him, and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary, and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. Amen. I want to talk to us for a while today on the topic, Called Out. Amen. Called Out. If you'll bow your heads with me one more moment, King Jesus, Master of the universe, creator of all that is, we thank you, God, for this opportunity to break the bread of life, to sit at the Master's table and dine upon that precious, life-giving, sustaining Word of God. Lord, today the environment in which we are in has no impact on the Word of God. Neither does it bind the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We loose today, God, by the authority of your Word, in the name of Jesus, in the power of the Holy Ghost, we loose today the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We ask, God, that you would touch the speaker. Help me to deliver the Word of God which you've laid in my spirit which you've placed upon my heart for God's people <laughs> at this very moment and this very time, that it might reach its mark in our hearing and in our hearts, that it might achieve the end for which it is sent, that it might cause us in our relationship with you to grow, to blossom, to bear fruit. We ask it all today in that mighty, powerful, wonderful name, Jesus. Amen. Praise God and amen. 
A couple of weeks ago, I talked to you on the topic of no loss of love, if you recall. And I talked about the fact that when things transpire in our lives, when things go beyond what we feel like sometimes they ought to go, when things don't go just right, that does not mean that God has stopped loving you or he loves you any less than he ever did. It means that he has a greater plan and a greater purpose than anything you can even imagine or think. Well, that is not what I'm talking about today. Today we are using the story of Lazarus and we're using the example of his coming out of the tomb to illustrate what God has called believers to today. You see, God has called all believers out of the grave. Hallelujah. The Word of God says we were all dead in trespass and sin. Amen. But because of the accomplished work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, we today have been called out of darkness, hallelujah, called out of death into life. I know a lot of Christian people who backslide. I know a lot of Christian people who get discouraged by circumstance and situations. Lisa, because they, they feel like, you know, well, this Christianity, this way of life that the pastor preaches, it just doesn't work for me. I've actually had people all but say those words to me at times. You know, well, it just doesn't work for me. No, you just haven't worked it right. I go on the internet a lot. I love to shop on the internet. Matter of fact, I'm sure Tommy would tell you that that is the bane of his existence. <laughs> that, that's why we've got so many boxes laying around the house because I love to shop on the internet. If I've got to shop for something, I don't want to go to a store and look around. I want to go on the internet. I want to hunt around, see if I can find the best possible price, you know, and I'm a bargain hunter, so I mean to tell you, there are some things I don't buy for months and months and months because I research it and research it and research it and wait for the price to come down, you know. And what amazes me, when you shop on the Internet and you shop sites like uh, Amazon and things like that, you know, people can rate the merchandise after they bought it. And people can write a little review about the merchandise. Well, what cracks me up is there are times, Bill, when I'll see that, oh, dozens of people have rated certain item, you know. And, oh, they're so pleased with it and they're so happy with it. They give it five stars. They are just pleased as punch over uh, the way that this thing works for them and the way that it performs and how easy it was to put together and all this kind of stuff. And without fail, there are going to be those people who've given it a one-star rating. And they write nothing but negativity, Johnny, about it. Oh, it's a piece of junk. I'll never buy this again. I'm sending it back to the manufacturer. It doesn't work the way it's meant to work. It, did. it was difficult to put together. And there I'm sitting, Bill, looking at 30 reviews that say it was easy to put together. That it works just exactly the way it's supposed to work. That it does just exactly what it's meant to do. But then there's that few people who say, oh, it just didn't work. It just didn't, it was hard to put together. And you know what I think to myself, Lisa? I think, what do you want to bet those few people who give it a one-star rating are the kind of people who don't read directions? I'm guilty. <laughs> Tommy, I'll tell you, I go to put something together, the last thing in the world I do is go to the directions. I do that when everything else has failed. Most people, Tommy won't, he'll buy a new phone and then he'll sit down and read the entire booklet about the phone. I'm like, no, I know how to dial a phone. 
I know how to do what I need to do. And if there's anything it can do special, I'll figure it out. And of course, 10 years later, I do. <laughs> I'll, I'll realize that thing can do things, and I'll say, what do you know? I never knew this phone could do thus and so. And Tommy will say, well, you've only had it for three years, and you're just figuring out now that it can do that. And I'll say, well, you know, I, I just never knew it could do that. And I do the same thing with laptops. I do the same thing with tablets, and anything electronic, you know. And, or even certain programs like Word and Excel and all that, you know. And Tommy will say, well, if you'd read the instructions, you'd know it could do all that right off the starting line, and you wouldn't have to figure it out on your own over the course of time. Well, unfortunately, I'm not the kind of person to read instructions unless I absolutely have to, okay? But, you know, the people who give those items one stars online... Chances are 9 out of 10, they're the kind of people who don't read instructions. If they do read them, they don't follow them. Hello now. Yep. Or they're the kind of people who get impatient. They're the kind of people who, if things don't just, uh, aren't put together a certain way, they gripe and groan. Why did they... Uh, manufacture this thing this way. Why didn't they manufacture it that way? It would have been easier to put together that way. Well, that's all. It might have been easier to put together that way. The only problem is, honey, what you got in front of you don't put together that way. So you can sit here and lament about it all you want to. You're not going to change one single thing. You need to deal with what you got in front of you. Hello now. Amen. I'm going to tell you, there are a lot of believers today who feel like Christianity and walking by faith doesn't work for them. And they get discouraged and they wind up leaving the faith. And you know why? Because they're not really walking by faith to begin with. They don't read the book. They don't follow the instructions. I know people who have been in the Pentecostal church for 40 years who don't listen to a word the pastor says. <laughs> If you're not going to listen to what the preacher is trying to help you understand, why go to church? I used to go to church as a kid, Johnny, and even as a kid, I understood that the pastor was up there to try to help instruct me and try to help me to grow and try to help me to understand things better so that I could walk by faith and I could make things work for me the way that God meant for them to work for me. I understood that. And if the preacher got up and he said something that helped me to understand I wasn't doing something right, I didn't go home griping about the preacher. Hello now. I went home praying that God had helped me fix what I wasn't doing right. Amen. You know, because I understood the problem wasn't Pastor Barlow. The problem was me. It wasn't that he didn't understand. That just didn't work that way. No, what he was saying was right. I'm the one who needed to fix some things. I'm the one who needed to change the way I do things. We got a lot of people today like Lazarus. Lazarus is an illustration of the born again experience. He's an illustration of the believer passing from death to life, from darkness to light. The only problem with a lot of Christians is once the Lord has called them out of darkness, they continue to walk in darkness. Are you walking like a believer? Are you literally living by faith? I got people who come to me sometimes and boy, they'll complain about their circumstance. Oh, it's so terrible. It's so horrible. I'm about ready to have a stroke. I'm about ready to have a nervous breakdown. I'm about to pass out. It's just overwhelming. I can't imagine what God is doing uh, in my life. I don't understand what the Lord is doing. And they're just, Johnny, they just tell me about all the woe. The only problem is, are they seeking the Lord's guidance? Are they seeking the Lord's direction? 
Are you asking God, listen to me now, are you asking God, what should I do about this circumstance? Or are you trying to figure it out on your own? If you're trying to figure it out on your own, then honey, you're not walking in the light. You're not walking in the life. Don't blame God when things don't go right because God hadn't been part of the process. You never asked him in to the situation. You never invited him in to the circumstance. When did you hit your knees and pray and ask God, what should I do? Got people who will stand there and accuse God of everything under the sun. But when did they ever stop to ask the Lord, what direction should I take? If God has put a circumstance in your life, then let me tell you what he wants you, how he wants you to respond to that circumstance. He wants you to come to him and ask him, how do I approach this? He didn't put that circumstance in your life so that you could figure it out on your own. No, unbelievers, those who are walking still dead in their spirit, those who have not been born again, those who have not been called out of the grave, like Lazarus, those people, Johnny, are trying to figure life out on their own terms. Those people are trying to find answers. Those people are trying to figure out what to do and how to do it and where to go and who to get help from. Believers already know the answer to all those questions. I need answers, I go to God. I need help, I go to God. Hello now. I need direction, I go to God. Jesus said, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find, knock, and it shall be open unto you. Have you done any of those things? Because if you haven't, then you're still living like an unbeliever. You're still living like someone who has not been called out of the grave. You're still stumbling around in darkness, but believers don't stumble around in darkness. <laughs> God hasn't called us to stumble around in darkness. In John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, the word of the Lord reads, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Listen, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. When we invite Jesus Christ into our lives, we invite light. Hallelujah. There is no longer any need to stumble around. There is no longer any need to try to feel your way blind through life. Hello now. There is no longer any need to uh, try to figure out the answer to the questions that we have without any direction or any guidance or anyone who's able to offer us help. No, we have help. We have illumination. We have light. Jesus is light. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. John said in John 1, in him was life, and that life was the light of men. So if Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and if that life is the light of men, then what do you think God wants us to walk in? He wants us to walk in light. He wants us to walk in illumination. You see, if you're living the Christian life today and you find yourself feeling around and you find yourself blind and you say, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what's going on. I haven't got a clue. Then, honey, I got news for you. You still are living in the tombs. Because God has called us out. Hallelujah. He called Lazarus out of that tomb. He didn't call Lazarus back to life so Lazarus could continue to live in the tomb. 
Hello now. He didn't say, Lazarus, come forth while they left the stone in front of the tomb. So Lazarus then could come back to life and talk to him through the stone. No, he first told him, roll away the stone. Because when I bring life into his life, when I bring life back to his body, I want him to come back out into the light. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm here to tell you, it breaks my heart that so many Christian people today are in the church, but they're still in darkness. They're still stumbling around. They're still fumbling around. They still constantly say, I don't know. I don't understand. I don't get it. Well, why don't you? Jesus said, ask, and it shall be given unto you. I don't know what direction to go in. I don't know what, how I should respond. Seek, and ye shall find. Hello now, isn't that what he said? Right. You see, as a believer, you walk in the light. Honey, there is nothing that God wants hidden from you. If you need to understand your current dilemma, ask God about it and he'll tell you. If you need to know what you need to do and how you need to do it, ask God about it and he'll tell you. The problem with a lot of Christian folk is... If God does try to tell us what he wants us to do and how he wants us to do it, we just don't want to do it that way. Oh, my goodness. Lord, I'm miserable in this relationship. I'm not happy. I've been dating this fella for months and months or years and years, and I'm so unhappy and I'm so miserable. I don't know what to do with myself. Lord, you need to change him. You need to change her. You need to do that. How many of us have been down this path, right? How many of us have prayed this prayer? And the Lord is saying, you don't need to be with that person. You shouldn't even be with that person. That is not somebody you should even be dating. Hello now. But we don't want to break up with them. No, because we're all come settled in, miserable and unhappy, yes. But we're also too insecure. We're also too afraid to break up with them thinking, well, I'd rather be miserable with somebody than be happy by myself. Well, I tell you what, I learned a long time ago, I'd rather be happy by myself than be miserable with somebody, if I tell them the truth. Hey, if I'm going to be miserable, honey, I'll be miserable by myself, because I'm sure enough not going to be miserable with somebody. That's ridiculous. But how many people do that very thing, right? They drive a car, they complain about the car. Oh, this lousy old car. It's constantly breaking down on me. It's constantly giving me trouble. Well, why don't you sell it and go get you a new car? Well, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I, then I'm going to have a car payment I have to deal with. I don't want to have to deal with a car payment. I don't want to have to. Um, excuse me, how much money you spent in the last year fixing that old tub that you're complaining about? Break down how much money you spent over the 12 months of the last year, and that is how much money you could have been paying in car payments on a new car. Hello now? And the new car you could count on. The new car would be dependable. The new car would get you to work instead of your having to call in late half the time because it stalled or the battery was dead or the alternator was gone. Am I telling the truth? See, there are times when God gives us direction and the Lord tells us what he wants us to do or how we ought to do something. And the problem is we don't want to let God lead. And we say, no, Lord, I want you to fix this, but I want you to fix it another way. I remember years ago, I finally met a girl. I was trying so hard to be what I thought I was supposed to be, and you know. I finally met a girl, Bill, who would even look at me cross-eyed. And she took a shine to me, and I was so thrilled to have a girl who... Actually, you know, took a shine to me and all that. And 
I began to pray. I said, oh, Lord, let this be the girl that I need to marry that's going to fix me and it's going to make everything right and it's going to turn everything the way it ought to be turned. I don't know what it is, what magic it is that women have, but I've been told they have some kind of magic power that can fix the broken, you know. And I finally met this girl and I went up to... Uh, Shamrock, Texas, where some friends of mine were pastoring the church, and they had invited me up there to preach, and I went up there, and I began to pray, and I said, Lord, is this the girl that I'm to marry? And guess what God did? He said, ask, and it shall be given unto you. You ask the question, he'll give you the answer. Do you know what his answer was? No. I'm serious. Just as clear as could be, I knew the answer was no. I talked to Sister Bruce about her. Sister Bruce was like an adopted mom to me. And I talked to Sister Bruce. She was the pastor of the Church of God up there in Shamrock. And I talked to her about this girl. And Sister Bruce said, honey, listen to this now. She is not the girl for you. Sister Bruce had never laid eyes on her. She had never met her. But see, God was using Sister Bruce to try to get the message to me. I'd already prayed and God said no. Now I'm talking to somebody that I deeply admire and deeply respect. And they're telling me through the Spirit, no is the answer. So the next night I went to prayer and I began to pray. I said, Lord, is this the girl I'm supposed to marry? And the Lord said, I've already told you no. <laughs> so what was my brilliant response? Then you better make her the right one. <laughs> oh boy. That's what I told God. See, this is what happens when we try to live... And we're not being true to ourselves. We're not being honest with ourselves, okay? All I knew, Lisa, was I had to get married if I was going to fix what was broken in me. <laughs> That's all I knew. And I was sick and tired of being alone. I was sick and tired of being lonely. I was sick and tired of being depressed. I was sick and tired of being miserable. And all I knew was that I needed a woman to fix me. That's all I needed was a woman. She could be fat. She could be skinny. She could be ugly. She could be pretty. Didn't matter no kind of way to me. Didn't matter at all. And I said, Lord, you better make her the one. Because, see, I was trying to force my will on God. Mm -hmm. Long story short, I got married. I wasn't married a month. <laughs> Literally. And I woke up one morning and she was gone. Her mother had taken her off and hit her, said, we made a mistake. She's not ready to be married. She's not mature enough. She's not, oh great, I've got a marriage license on the wall and I've got, uh, you know, everything's been done. We've been to the church. We give, we've made our vows. All of a sudden, mom finally realizes that her daughter's not ready to be married. Mm -hmm. I wound up divorced. I wound up a divorced man after being with a girl that I never touched physically, literally. We never had any kind of intimacy for a month. She was scared to death of it. I could have cared less, so it worked for me just <laughs> either way. It was fine with me. So, you know, so I wound up divorced. Well, guess what, Johnny? That messed up. Not only did it mess up my present situation, but it messed up my future as well. Because now every girl I ever talked to looked at me like I was damaged goods because I was divorced. Now, it didn't matter that I had never consummated my relationship with this woman. It didn't matter that in God's eyes I was never married to this woman. Because God doesn't go by the marriage license. God goes by whether or not the relationship's been consummated. None of that mattered. All of a sudden, every woman I ever tried to talk to, every woman I tried to date, nope, they saw me as a divorced man, and that was it. I was damaged goods. You see, 
Why did, why did I put myself in this horrible pickle? Because I wouldn't listen to God to begin with. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? There's a lot of people out there listening to me right now, and they're griping and groaning and complaining about God and why God is putting them through what they're going through right now. And the problem is you may be where you're at because you wouldn't listen to God a few months ago or a few years ago. You may be where you're at because God wants you to seek Him out now. You may not know what to do right now because you've never asked Him. That's right. You're walking in darkness as though God had never called you out. But He has called you out. He has called you to walk in the light. He has offered you answers when you have questions. He has offered you direction when you're clueless. My God have mercy. He has offered open doors for you when you're surrounded by nothing but walls. And you can't even find a window. God has offered to open doors. But you got to ask. you got to seek. You got to knock. They're not just going to magically open. No, you got to put it in God's hands. You got to talk to Him about it. And then you got to have the courage to listen to what He says. You got to have the courage to do what He directs you to do. The Word of God tells us today in Ephesians chapter, put my glasses on or I won't be able to tell you right. Ephesians 5, verses 8 through 10. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Boy, I'm going to tell you, that's the best advice that any preacher can give God's people. Walk as children of light. Quit walking like you're still in darkness. Quit walking like you're still in the tomb. You're not in the tomb. He's called you out of the tomb. He's called you by name. Mm -hmm. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Walk in light. Walk as children of light. You've got too many believers out there today griping and groaning about their walk with God because they're still living like they're in darkness. They're still acting like there are no answers available. There's no direction available. There's plenty of answers available. God has said ask. There's plenty of direction available. God has said, seek. There are many doors that can be opened to you, but God has said, knock. See, everybody wants to just go through life and expect everything to go perfect and everything. And then when things go off kilter and things don't work the way they want them to work, they just start griping and groaning and moaning and complaining. That's not how children of light are to live. That's not how children of light are to walk. We understand that our answers are found in asking, in seeking, in knocking. In 1 John chapter 1, verses 4 through 7, And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This, then, is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you, that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. Ooh, that's powerful. Mm -hmm. And do not the truth. Listen, and do not the truth. Not believe not the truth. Do not the truth. But if we walk in the light... As he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. The problem with too many believers today is they don't understand that they've been called out. You've been called out of darkness. 
You've been called into his marvelous light. God has called you into a way of life that is full of light. You do not have to blindly feel your way through. You don't have to wonder the answer. You don't have to wonder why this and why that. No, you can ask God and he'll tell you. I'm going to tell you, I've had some miserable, terrible things happen in my life. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. This boy, I'm, I'm not going to stand here and lie to you. I didn't have a lot of the best examples growing up as a kid of Christianity. My grandmother was about one of the most faithless people I ever knew, bless her heart. She had more fear and anxiety in her than any believer ought to have. I wish I'd have had, you know, the kind of parents and grandparents that a lot of Pentecostal preachers brag about heaven, but that was not my life experience. Johnny, it has taken me a very long time, a very long time, a lot of wrong paths to finally get to the place where I'm at today, to finally get to my understanding that I have today. So I'm not standing up here saying, oh, I'm perfect. I've got it all figured out. I do all this just right. No, but I'll tell you what, a lot of this stuff I finally figured out. Of course, I'm 53 now, and I've only known it for 10 years, but that's okay. You know, a lot of this stuff I finally figured out, Lisa. A lot of Christian people, they've known about it for decades. They've been walking in light for decades. But I'm going to tell you, for many years, this old boy walked like I was still in darkness. I was not living up to the possibilities that God had for me as a believer because I wasn't walking in the light. I wasn't understanding that when I have a question, there's my answer. Yes. When I need direction... There's the guy I go to to get the direction that I need. When I'm confounded and confused, there is no need to remain confounded and confused. I can go to God and say, Lord, what should I do? And you want to know the funny thing? He'll tell you. He'll tell you. He'll tell you what to do that's not only best for you, but that's best for everybody all the way around. My God have mercy. John said, walk in the light. Walk as children of light. If you say that you're a child of God and you're still walking in the dark, then honey, you're lying to yourself. Because as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If you're not allowing yourself to be led by the Spirit of God, and by the way, if you buck God every time God tries to give you direction, you are not being led by the Spirit of God. The way to be led by something is to follow it. Being led, being led by it isn't that God throws directions at you that you ignore and go your own way. No, that is not being lit. If somebody says, follow me, and they walk off, and I stay where I'm standing, and they keep walking, honey, I can, just because they said, follow me, does not mean they're leading me. They're only leading me so long as I'm following. Hello now. A lot of Christians want to call themselves being led by God because they do acknowledge God is supposed to be their leader. The only problem is they never follow any direction he gives, they ignore. Any advice or counsel he offers, they just say no to. Lastly, this afternoon, Matthew chapter 8, I believe it is. No, 5. <laughs> See, I'm telling you folks, you get to a certain age, don't be trying to be Superman. Don't be trying to read something without your glasses. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light... So shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We read that passage and oftentimes we think that means, 
You know, oh, if we're going to let our light shine, then we're going to be doing good things. We're going to be doing charitable things. We're going to be doing kind things. We're going to be doing nice things. And people will see. And we'll glorify God by doing these nice, kind things. That's how we let our light shine. Um, let me tell you another way you let your light shine. You let your light shine by seeking God when you need direction and then following His guidance. You let your light shine by asking God for answers when you've got questions that you cannot find the answers to. You let your light shine when you knock on doors and wait until God opens the right one before you walk through. I know it's too many Christian people. Johnny spend their life trying to push through doors and knock down doors. I've been guilty of it myself. I know I have. Instead of letting God open the right one, I'm out there pushing against doors because I want what's on the other side of that door. And bless God, I'm going to get it, God or no God, I'm going to get it. I'm going to push my way through. I'm going to beat my shoulder against that door until it opens. God said, no, don't do that. He said, knock and it shall be opened unto you. If it didn't open, guess what? That means God don't want you there. If that door doesn't open to you, it means because God doesn't want you on the other side of that door. That door leads to a path you don't want to walk down. That door leads to a journey that you do not need to take. Let God, let God take charge, you know. I look at, I'm not a dancer by any stretch of the, uh, the imagination. <laughs> I see some of these old movies, you know, where some couple tries to dance and the fellow will say, um, excuse me, but will you let me lead? Because the woman wants to lead and they're just crossing their feet and they're dancing all over one another because you can only have one lead. We got too many people trying to dance with God and they're still trying to take the lead. Hello now. Instead of letting God lead, they're trying to take the lead. Honey, all you're going to do is get your feet all stepped on. All you're going to do is get a hurt on if you don't let God lead. We've been called out, just like Lazarus. Jesus came to our lives when all hope was gone. Sin had taken full and complete control, and the wages of sin is death. But Jesus came. And he called us by name. He called us out of the grave. He called the church to be there for us, to help us in the process. Somebody had to roll away the stone. <laughs> Somebody had to take the grave clothes off of him. They had to unwrap the bandages that were wrapped around his body. Somebody had to be there to help. That's what the church is here for. The church is here to help you not only come out into the light, but be able to appreciate and benefit from it every possible way that you can. You're not going to benefit from new life if you're still tied up with ropes and chains. You're not going to benefit from new life if you're still wrapped about with grave clothes. No, somebody's got to loose him and let him go. Hallelujah. That's what the church is here for. But folks, if you're not walking in the light, if you're not asking when you have questions, if you're not seeking when you need direction, if you're not knocking on doors and waiting to see whether or not that was the door God wanted to open or not, then you're not walking in the light. You're walking like somebody who's still an unbeliever. You're walking like somebody who has not been saved, who has not been born again. And if you're going to be a child of God today, you've got to understand You've been called out. Hallelujah. You've been called out. Walk as children of the light. Amen. Amen. Amen.